peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to make a fish design using variegated thread. So stick around for a fantastic video. In a previous video, we covered some of our lessons learned while using variegated thread. Mm -hmm. So check that video out. Let me import this fish design. And it's a little big, so we're going to shrink them down a little bit. Okay, that's about a good size, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do trace bitmap. We're going to do a color trace bitmap of this one. And then we'll end up replacing some of the parts because it's all going to come out as a fill stitch. And what we want to do is take advantage of some satin or custom satin stitches for some of these, uh, what do you call them, fins? Mm -hmm. Yeah so that we can use our variegated thread yeah. to create some really colorful um, options with this. So we're gonna go to path, trace bitmap, do multi-scan, and we're gonna go colors. And what do we got? One, two, three, four, five different colors. Go smooth, remove background. And now I'm gonna drag this guy here. So again, to confirm that we this is not the PNG, but it is the actual uh, file that we need, I'm going to switch to the node selector tool and run my mouse over it. And when we see these red lines, we know that there are nodes there. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's a bunch of nodes. So the next thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to simplify this because it does not need, we do not need that many nodes yeah. in this guy. So going to path and simplify. You can see adjusted the shape a little bit on some of these things, but that's okay. We're gonna replace most of these fins anyway with some custom satin mm -hmm. stitches. Uh, we just want the general shape that we can kind of trace off of. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on a layer. It's gonna be layer one, which will be our tracing layer. We'll go ahead and add a layer we are image layer. So it be below. Add. Okay, and then I'm going to add all of this to our image layer. Okay. So now let's see. What do we actually want to keep here? Because there's a lot of details here that are going to mess up our fish. You see all of this stuff? We don't need all of that. I'm going to object and ungroup. Oh, and this is all still one group. Ungroup that. All right, so you can see our basic shape. This is what we want actually, and all of this stuff we want to get rid of. But I have to break this apart some more because it's still all com combined there. So I'm going to use my shortcuts here, shift command, okay, and that broke it up some more. Now we have a green fish. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. How funny, look at that. How many layers of uh, it's fish It's a lot of colors, so it's scanned by eight layers, so they're potential for there to be a lot of layers here, but I'm going to go ahead and delete a lot of these because we don't need them. Maybe it will clean up the design too. Exactly. To make this a little bit easier so that we don't accidentally um, keep a remnant of this trace bitmap, I'm just going to kind of build the fish off to the side here of what we need. So combined. I'm just going to keep ungrouping and uncombining things until these become individual parts because I just need one layer of it to trace. So 
So now I can delete all of this. And grab my fish and put them back on the workspace. And right now, let's go ahead and see what this would look like if we were to stitch it out like this. Oh, looks like it's not gonna work. Let's see what fault we get. So right here, um, we've seen this in the past where, you know, probably at one of these sharp corners, there's an angle that will not work. And we can actually see that if we, oops, go ahead and hold thing. If we do that troubleshoot, it'll probably tell us exactly which objects. So we got one right here and one right here where it's going to be crossing, the border is crossing over itself. And again, this, this is honestly good news for us because it's not our main fish that we're going to keep. We're going to keep this as a fill. These are we're going to replace with a custom satin stitch. So that's fine by me. But if you wanted to embroider this out, with all of these being fill stitches, you would just have to correct this, these two areas. And really it just involves going into the node tool and then fixing this little node right here that it's pointing to. So easy enough, but we're not gonna worry about it right now because we are not gonna use any of that. If you don't wanna go to the nodes and like fix the nodes, you can also just go to your break apart fill objects tool to fix these issues. Yeah, it should help. Okay. So let's create some railroad tracks that will give us the shapes that we want out of here. Now it's important when creating your railroad tracks that you don't connect the sides. So although right here it's a single point, when you're doing your railroad tracks, you want to make sure that you don't actually connect them at a single point. They need to remain separate like railroad tracks. So we're going to click our Bezier tool, and we don't have to be perfect here, but we're just gonna get close. So remember when you're doing this, you just, you wanna put a track at the angle that you want it to stitch at. We want them all to be satin stitches going okay. out like this. So do you have any tips for when you're doing this? I like to do one at a time, go to params, and then set it now as a custom satin mm -hmm. stitch. So you don't forget it later? Exactly. And by doing going to satin column, custom satin column, you'll see it work. Because if you're going to have an issue, you want to make sure you fix the issue now while you're working on it before you go and you know update everything and mm -hmm. then make sure you hit apply and quit after you're done with that and then what we're going to do is now that we have this shape done i'm going to click this inside green part and, and we're going to delete it delete okay. it and then i'm going to click this and turn it into that color which was a dark green right by yeah. hitting shift in that color just like that cool. all right you got the rest sure okay bye wait what All right, so that was time consuming. Yeah. But I think we're gonna get some good results with these satin mm -hmm. stitches here. The rest of it, we wanna be fill stitches, but we wanna set up our params, kind of like we talked about with our test circles, where we have some commands um, and we get the angles right for what this fish is. So I think we should make it so the stripes go vertically like this. What do you think? That's, that, well, that's neat. Yeah? So what we need to do is we're gonna take this 
because we are going to use a different kind of thread, like a multicolored thread for this part too, just a different mm -hmm. color, right? Um, but we want to turn this 90 degrees so that it goes vertically. So that it goes like that. Mm. Now you'll notice when we turned it 90 degrees, it's already going up. Oh, see where it went like that? Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're going to be able to get away from that because that eye. So I wonder, should we just put the eye on top as a second layer? Because so we make not sure too we get the same. Layers. Yeah, so that way we don't break apart that. So we we'll just make this one continuous shape. Okay, but I like this. I'm going to go ahead and put, hit apply and quit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the eye off to the side real quick. So what we actually have to do is we have to switch to the node selector tool. And get rid, and of, the get rid of the nodes. So we have to delete the nodes. I'm going to click on the node and then I'm going to hit remove. Zero click. And you see now it's gone. Mm. And now I can put the eye back. Select your tool. The problem will be we don't know exactly where the eye goes, but I think we can get a good idea. Mm -hmm. Probably like there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That way we'll get equal stripes all the way across. So now let's check this again in our params. Make sure we're still at 90 degrees and everything looks like it's going to go from one side to the other. Well, so we're going to need to add command here because we don't want it to break apart like that. We learned our lesson there. Uh, let me hit apply and quit. And now we're going to go extensions, stitch commands. Test selected object. Thank you. Starting in any position. Okay. And now we're. Like this. Apply and quit. Okay, and then the last one is here. Same thing, we're gonna want stripes to go vertically, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll go to params, change the angle to 90 degrees. Apply and quit, and then we'll add commands to that object as well. And we learned that there's really no difference in using an underlay or not. So I'm just going to leave the underlay. Mm -hmm. And perfect. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's see what this thing looks like. Yeah. All together. Quit. Select the whole thing. Should we add some text? Yes, we should. What do you want to add? Um, we can do like a fish pun, like fantastic or something. Fantastic? Yeah. I like that. But yeah, we're definitely going to do some restacking here so that we get, I guess, you know, a little bit easier. We're going to have to change the thread color nine, ten times. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is cool. The other thing I want to do is I want to do pull compensation because when we do satins like this, they end up scrunching up um, so that they look a lot thinner than they are right now. But if you do pull compensation, it, you can add some width to the satin stitches so that when it does pull together, it doesn't look quite so bad. So all we have to do there is uh, select all of our satins. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unselect our solid objects. Looks pretty good, right? But I'm going to do pull compensation, and I'm going to grow those out. Let's see what two millimeters looks like. That's probably too much. Yeah. Let's do 0.5. Kind of ruins some of the fins by doing that. Yeah, what do you think? Should we do pull compensation? Maybe do like 0.1. <laughs> yeah, I oh, definitely that. want to see space in between, but I don't want them to pull too hard. Okay, and then what about decreasing the zigzag length so that 
it's a little bit denser stitch. What do you think? Mm. Point three. That looks fine. Is that good? Yeah. I think that's gonna look cool. Yeah. Okay, so now let's stack in the uh, order that we want to go in. So Just to in. make sure we don't have to do a bunch of color changes. Yeah, I, I don't want to do a bunch of color changes, so I'm going to go ahead, do the easy parts first. Here, here, and then I'll do all of the dark green mm -hmm. and then the light green. And we're gonna go to Inkscape, edit, restack objects in order of selection. Okay. One more test. Yeah. And then add text. Yeah. That looks cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you want to add some text? Yeah. What fonts? What kind of font do you think? A fishy good? font. A fishy font? Good. I like it. Let's export. and I think it turned out pretty nice and nothing too fishy. Oh, don't be coy, it actually turned out very well. You have nice satin stitches exactly where we wanted them and we have a nice consistent stripe design all the way through. It's fantastic. <laughs> so if you have any fish puns, make sure to drop a line. <laughs> Down below. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye. Or I should say be crappy. Crappy is a type of fish. And be crappy.